YouTube, what's going on? Crystal Journals Comics, and I am back with a Infinity War review. Yes, I saw it this weekend, opening weekend. If you guys watched my previous video, the uh, the movie experience, the cinematic experience, uh, had I had some issues that kind of I don't want to say ruined the movie for me, but you know, like I said, a couple bad apples in a packed house. But putting that aside. Man, did I enjoy this movie, huh? Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, and I'm gonna try to make this pretty quick because uh, the main reason why I really can't go into detail is because I'm just, I'm left, I'm left unfulfilled, but but in a good way. It's not a bad thing because we all know that the end of this movie isn't really the end. So. Letting you guys know, there probably is going to be some, there will be some spoilers. I'm not going to say probably. I don't know how much I'm going to talk about. There will be some spoilers. If you have not seen it, turn this video off, save it for later, put it in your watch later um, list and come back to it because uh, uh, here we go. So um, let's just talk about uh, kind of some basics. Pace of the film. It was excellent. Um, two and a half hours. I felt like I could have been in the movie for two, uh, in the theater for two more hours, hands down. Um, yeah, pace of the film was great. Uh, there were certain moments where it got kind of slow and, uh, it was really like some introverted deep thinking from some of the certain characters. And because I'm so analytical, I thought to myself in those moments, now, was this moving too slow? But then I thought about it and I felt like it was perfect because there were these little pockets of time where we kind of uh, slowed down with the characters and were able to be in that moment and, and in the intensity of those moments. Otherwise, the pace was was pretty fast. You know, I, the movie happened in the span of like, what, 24 hours from the beginning to the end. Um And there were there were, you know, there was the what was going on in New York. There was what was going on in uh, Wakanda, and there was what was going on in, in, in space and a couple of different places in space. And, you know, as we know, uh, Iron Man meeting up with Doctor Strange uh, and, and Peter, Spider-Man, and then them going into space and then meeting up with uh, Guardians, you know, and then uh, Thor went on his own way. Uh, Gamora went on her own way and, and tried to face off with Thanos. And, um, and then of course we had, uh, cap, um, in black widow and, and vision and Scarlet, Witch end up going to Waka uh, Wakanda. And so there, there's all these different things happening. And it's like, well, you know, we, we saw Avengers, the first one where you take, we had all these movies build up to this and you take it all and it comes together. And then even civil war, obviously, uh, brought in Ant-Man, Black Panther, but, uh, you know, it, n either were not to the extent, uh, uh, extensiveness of, of, of what we saw in this film. And you think about this and you're like, can this work? Can this really work? And I'm going to use Suicide Squad as an example to where when you bring people together and it doesn't work. Now, I'm not going to say that, that you can't find the movie Suicide Squad as entertaining, but I just, I watched that movie three times now and I just, it's uh, Harley Quinn and a little bit of Will Smith. Um, Harley Quinn was the movie. Everything else to me was like, it just, the, the pace was, was off. We were not, we were not um, attached to any of the characters really um, besides Harley maybe. And, and there was an emotional connection with, with Deadshot. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it was so convoluted, uh, you, you, you know, the bad guy in it just made, made no sense. So we were set up so, so amazingly well with bringing Thanos in and, and bringing all these characters together with Guardians doing their things in, in the first couple of movies where all the Avengers have been and, and seeing them kind of be brought in. And of course, Spider-Man. I mean, I just felt all the setups were set perfectly to have this perfect, smooth domino effect. Um, and then Thanos was just, I mean, was amazing. Um, I think that Josh Brolin did an amazing job. I do say, you know, the look of whoever the actor was that did the, um, sneak peek at Thanos at the end of the first Avengers, that look, I missed that look. I'm not talking about acting or anything like that. Just the look, he was a little more purple, you know, instead of like that pinkish purple 
and uh, oh man, he just had this evil look to him, you know. It was, uh, and it was a little more like like I felt like uh, the comic books, like that Ron Lim um, kind of uh, energy that was just so uh, what's what's the word powerful and in 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 demeaning and. Uh, intimidating now don't get me wrong josh brolin was intimidating but i think it was more of his presence and his personality and that worked um so one thing i want to talk about thanos in this film is i was getting into some debates that he was very altruistic and in a sense somebody compared him to eric killmonger's character and i'm like no 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 let me tell you about thanos thanos now, even though they, they try to show a little more humanity, maybe in this film than in the comic books, but Thanos is nowhere near altruistic. What he is, is a complete sociopath. Now, Eric Killmonger was altruistic, and he was one of those villains that you can really relate to, and at the end of that film, you, you, sh you almost shed a tear for him. Um, although he was corrupted by power and by anger, he, he allowed himself to be reactionary instead of, you know, logically... Uh, actionary in, in a sense um in his reactionary uh you know driven by his reaction driven by his anger and his emotions is what got the best of him although he still kept that altruistic uh kind of you, you know righteousness with him and in him thinking that he wanted to do good thanos does not have that thanos is the the most the the, the most all-time uh, uh definition of a narcissistic sociopath because what a sociopath does, you know, Thanos is about, oh, it's about balance, right? And I'm doing this for the betterment of mankind. It's about balance for the survival of all species throughout the universe. BS, BS. See, what a sociopath does, a sociopath cares about one thing, power. Power on such a supreme level. And the narcissist within the sociopath does this in a way to make you see or seem that they are the good guy. Now, um, I believe Thor in the film said, you will never be a god to Thanos. And that right there is what I use in defense of what I'm trying to say about how Thanos is not altruistic. Thanos has to convince himself. He has to convince others. But sociopaths, they, and narcissists, they have to convince themselves first. He has to convince himself that he's a god. Okay. If you do not do that, you're merely a psychopath out for power. You're still a mortal being just searching for power, right? But a sociopath at his level wanting to be, he has to be a god. So to do that, he has to create a dialogue that says, I'm in control. I'm doing this for a just godly reason. So by creating this, what seems to be an altruistic dialogue, an ideal, it's really all fabricated out of the fact that it gives him purpose. It allows him to say, I am a God because this is my plan and I am doing it for the good. I will strike down just like God in the Bible, you know, and, and, and I will strike down and the meek shall inherit and all this stuff, you know, uh, the vengeful God uh, that, that the, the power only exists as through God. That's what Thanos is. So, yeah, but... Uh, uh, wow, such an amazing job. Let me let me just talk about the ending though, and say that wow, what an unsettling. What a, I, I'm so pissed off at this ending, but it's not like a pissed off like I was at the last Jedi. Like what the hell did I just watch? It was like, it it, it was heartbreaking. I'm and I'm pissed off that I have to wait a year, but it's a good pissed off. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, you know, I don't know if you expected all that and with 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 what happened. I mean, I can logically know in the comic books and. You know, knowing that we already have movies announced for some of the characters that may have died, something's going to happen. Some of the, not, but not all of them are dead, but yet I'm sure some are, if, you know, for those like, and again, spoiler, Gamora, which, man, that sucks. Um, maybe, and Loki, man, man, I really hope they bring Loki back somehow. I don't know how, but, um... And then, but, you know, we got, we got another Spider-Man announced. We got another Black Panther announced. Um, 
another Guardians announced. So, you know, something's going to happen, but what's it going to be? You know, how much are they going to stay true to the books? Are they going to bring in, obviously, if you saw the sneak peek at the end with uh, Nick Fury calling um, Captain Marvel, which uh, I'll just show off here. It's not um, Carol Danvers, but Marvel uh, uh, Spotlight, number one, Captain Marvel. Yeah, I can't wait for that movie. But um, so Captain Marvel is going to come in probably in the next Avengers and do something. And are we going to see Adam Warlock, who I know in the comic books played pivotal, pivotal role in uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War uh, storyline. So what are we going to see? What's going to happen? We have to wait a year. And I'm just like, man, at least it's not a two year wait like Star Wars. But um, God, I just I don't know if I really have any big issues with this movie, you know, I got to watch it again. I'm big on watching it again to make these decisions. Um, I thought the humor was great. I, I didn't think it was overbearing. And I think, again, Marvel does this well. Um, and uh, I thought every character played it, it, its role. And I wanted to see more of Cat. But I guess we're, we're going to see a lot more of him in the next one. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll all piece together. Um I mean, man, oh, I love the, the, the Iron Spider suit. I love how they did it. I love that it it's classic blue and red. Uh, and it just, man, it, they, it worked perfectly on the big screen. And, man, oh, so beautiful. Um, yeah. I wanted to see a little more of Black Panther 2 just because we just came off the movie. But that's okay because we just came off that movie. We got a lot of Black Panther um, so I don't know what else more to say, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it to this. I'm going to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Did you guys enjoy it? Did you have any issues? I don't know where I'm ranking it right now. It's probably in my top three or four. But I really think I have to see the next one and then take them both together and put it in my, my list. And I think it definitely has an ability at that point to be number one. But Iron Man is still up there. Black Panther is still up there. The First Guardians is still up there. So... All right, guys, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and, and tuning in. Um, let's have some uh, respectful discussion about the film. And until next time.